Welcome back to Jade's Fitness Bucket List. Squatting. Squatting is considered either a strength exercise or a necessity when needing to talk to a toddler. Bruh. The best way to tell your brain you value something is to spend time in that position. So I put my money where my mouth is and I thought, right, I'm gonna see how long I can squat. Two, one, go. 10 minutes remaining. In some cultures, it's still considered a very normal day-to-day -day piece of life. I'm half Indian, uh, my dad's from Goa and my mom's from Spain. And um, India conjures up these images of older people in a squat position and actually um, many cultures in the East. So I'm a bit off topic now, but if you look at a traditional Asian house, a lot of the furniture is on the floor. So in some houses you may have like a low table, almost like a coffee table where people would sit like cross-legged on the floor. I'm sitting on a chair, but I'm sitting, I'm sitting cross-legged. And so you may have people sitting on the floor where they have to squat or use their body to help themselves stand up again. You have a lot of beds that are on the floor. In fact, the room I'm in at the moment is a bedroom and the bed is on the floor as well. Um, not on purpose, but I personally like sleeping on the floor. And in history, some women have used squatting to help them give birth as well. They're literally like this. There are many benefits um, of squatting, apart from just being a really good exercise to open up the hips and uh, feel more mobile and uh, for injury prevention. Squatting is a rare position that lets you practice several normal ranges of hip flexion, external rotation, knee flexion and ankle dorsiflexion. When you're lacking hip flexion, you end up using your lumbar spine to solve movement problems that your hip should for you. Now, as I was becoming more comfortable with squatting in my day-to-day -day life, I didn't just want to have squatting as a thing I do because it's part of my exercise routine. I wanted squatting, like in Asian cultures, like in my dad's uh, traditional Indian culture, to be part of my daily life. So I would squat when revising for my exams. I would squat when reading books, hence what I'm doing in this, uh, in my attempted 10-minute squat. And little by little, I found that not only did the time I spent in a squatting position increase, but also naturally my body feels more comfortable in a position of a squat and it fixes itself. We want to rely on our hips rather than our spine more in a squat position, but people who can't squat effectively rely more on their spine by rounding it to get into the position more easily for themselves. When you're holding a weight in a squat, it's optimal to keep your back straight and your torso upright. But without a weight, it doesn't really matter if your back is straight or not. So when you're in a deep squat and allow your back to round, it's very restorative for the spine. So it helps to, for example, rehydrate the discs of the spine. Out of the many things I need to work for in a squat position, I think one of the biggest things is my feet turn out. So if you try squat right now, squat on the chair, <laughs> you'll notice that my feet, uh, let's keep doing that, that my feet are uh, turned out. And so one of the hardest elements of a squat is to turn, is to make your feet, oh, sorry, parallel. Um, at the moment, I can only achieve this because I'm leaning at the back of the chair to help me with this. But this is one of the hardest elements for people to squat like this without relying on any surface to, to lean on like I am. But fear not, that doesn't seem to matter. It also doesn't matter as much that you have to round your spine a little bit when you squat because you still lack the mobility to fully squat with your back straight. I see a lot of kind of uh, reels on Instagram and TikTok uh, of fitness people saying that you must keep a, a straight back. That's great if you can do that, but it's not a detriment if you can't keep a straight back. The only time you would want a straight back when squatting is when you're holding a heavy weight to squat. Otherwise, just getting down there is, is good enough. And you know me, I always have to sprinkle a few scientific studies in. Arthritic hip pain in the Chinese men and women was 80 to 90% lower than for their American counterparts. Some differences can be attributed to genetics for sure, but some differences were attributed to the way the Chinese use their bodies on a daily basis. So this is what I was saying, you know, when we, uh, we only really see this when we can't use our body. The way that the Chinese use their bodies on the daily basis, for example, sleeping closer to the floor, squatting, crawling, ducking, 
um, getting up repetitively from the floor has enabled them to have a much lower risk of arthritis of the hip compared to their American counterparts. Researchers wrote, squatting utilizes an extreme range of motion that may engage areas of hip cartilage that are not loaded during the upright stance, possibly stimulating turnover and regeneration of cartilage that is otherwise subject to disuse related thinning and more vulnerable to stress. Not gonna lie, I like our Western toilets like anyone else, but it has been seen that in countries where they squat to use the toilets, we see a massive decrease in digestive issues compared to Western countries that use the toilet that we're all familiar with. Particularly things like IBS, inflammatory diseases of the gut. Us humans now in the modern day, we're all battling against gravity, against technology creep, food confusion, stress, sleep disruption, and the inevitable process of aging. I can see those crow's feet finding their way on my face. <laughs> For me, like finding the joy of movement allows me to live a healthier and more fulfilled life. It gives people the armor that they need to take on the natural challenges of our everyday life. We're programmed to come into contact with the ground, right? So early humans sat on the ground, uh, we slept on the ground and we did our number twos on the ground. Nice visual image for you guys there. Some cultures still do this to this very day. This may partly explain why they're able to stay more active in old age than your average Westerner. We're living in a world today, especially in the Western world, where we want to optimise everything, right? We want to optimise our technology so we can put minimal effort to doing almost anything in life. This fascinated me as well. One reason we don't want babies to skip the crawling stage and jump straight to walking is because crawling puts weight on the femurs, the largest bone in the body, in ways that set the hips up well for the future. As probably all of you know who've watched my videos and you're probably watching this because you are interested in, in movement and trying to live a less sedentary life, when we do sit down for long periods of time, it puts our hips in a position when we're sitting that shortens and stiffens the tissues in the front of the hip and leg. So as the body adapts to that position, so if you, like I said at the beginning, if you spend a lot of time in a position, it tells your body and your brain that that position is important to you and it adapts the body to deal with that. So if you spend a lot of time sitting, your body adapts to this position and makes it inevitable that you have restriction in your hips. Not many people can squat for the same time that they can sit, meaning you're more likely to get up and move. People can sit down on a chair longer than they could probably squat for. I'm gonna just throw that assumption out there. And that's actually a good thing because even if you have a standing desk, so you're standing for most of the day instead of sitting, that's still not as good as constantly moving the body. So if you put yourself in a position like a squat where maybe you can't squat for that long, it's actually beneficial because it's going to make your body stand up from the squat, move about and change position. So for example, um, even though a standing desk is probably better than a sitting desk, because I think a lot of us can, again, sit longer than we are, than we can stand. It's only better, not because standing is particularly better than sitting. When we've studied hunter gatherers, they do tend to sit for long periods of time as well. So it's not that sitting is really bad and you should destroy all the chairs and the sofas in your house. It's that we need sitting is one of the positions that if we get complacent, we can do for a very long period of time and therefore minimizes the possibility of us getting up and moving and lubricating our joints. And so squatting has now become a position that not many people can do for more than five to ten minutes and so it naturally makes us want to get up and move before we go back into a squatting position. You'll notice as I'm filming this video I have one leg up, sometimes I have two leg up, legs up, sometimes I'm sitting down properly. I'm just a natural fidgeter and I think that that's proven to be a good thing now but you'll also notice in the thumbnail that I have of me squatting for ten minutes that I'm not just static in that squatting position. Sometimes I lean from side to side and put more weight on alternative legs and I do shift slightly and I do that on purpose. I'm still in a squat position but it's it's just my body giving me signals that it feels more comfortable to slightly rock or lean from left to right. And any movement like this is good because you're loading your leg muscles so they don't become passive while you're sitting for hours and hours on end and you're increasing blood flow and uh, blood sugar metabolism while you're moving about. 
And I repeat, I am no expert. I am definitely not the most mobile person ever. It's good enough if you just get yourself into a squat position. It doesn't matter if your back is slightly rounded because you don't have the mobility yet. It doesn't matter if your feet are literally facing um, east and west, you know, because the ultimate squat position is to have your feet parallel to your torso. What's important is that you're getting your body to move about for the various benefits that I've stated earlier. And don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Oh my god, that's like way more than 10 minutes. I mean, a few seconds more and I, I'm fine. What? Oh. oh my god. As you can see from the video, I was so shocked I managed to do that. I genuinely felt that I could have held it for longer and just seeing how far I could go before my hips felt that they were gonna explode. If you've liked this video, give me a big thumbs up. It really, really helps. And if you haven't subscribed already, Please subscribe if you've liked the video and hopefully by the time I upload the next video, you've added a few extra seconds or even minutes, hours. <laughs> you've added a few seconds to your squat time. Let me know. About standing desks is all the rage, but what about squatting desks? As in, you don't need a desk, you're just squatting. Let's see. Could I actually do this? I think you'd, your back has to be really rounded, so you would need a desk or something to have it a bit higher up, maybe at this level. Let's try. Maybe like at this level. Would that be cool? I think you need another shoebox. Who remembers Topshop? Well. Oh my God, I could, I could so be doing this. Does it look like I'm typing? <laughs> Spend more time on the ground. Ciao.